Thanks, Karen. Okay, hopefully I will uh, speak out, speak to the back of the room, as my father would say. I'd like to thank you all for coming. And I'm going to read a brief piece, because I'm generally pretty certain I can't get through this without tearing up, so I'm going to read it. Um, and then I'm going to follow with a piece from Senator Ann Cools. My father was keenly interested in the condition of man, and he had an insatiable curiosity about everything around him. This was core to all his conversations. No matter what the purpose or pretext was for initiating the discussion, it was invariably drawn to how a building would impact its, will impact the inhabitants, how a political or economic decision will impact the citizens or workers in an industry or business. My father believed in being a mentor to young people. It was one of the responsibilities of a senior professional to pass on the inherent knowledge gained from long experience. While I worked with my father closely during the memorable days of the Skydome competition, I myself am not an architect, thankfully. <laughs> For you guys, actually. <laughs> I have been the recipient and observer of his mentoring along with many others. Much has been said and will be said about his mentoring of young professionals, but he reached out much further. I recall one particular occasion which happened quite recently. My dad and I had been invited to dinner by my goddaughter, Lauren, and her partner, Jill. It was a lovely July evening, and dad quickly began regaling us, regaling us with stories of his escapades during his stint in the British Army in Egypt. Fast forward two hours or so through a myriad of topics, including a detailed conversation about what these two young ladies were doing with their lives, and we found ourselves in the middle of a conversation about Dad's studies in architecture school with a professor from Germany. We were discussing a particular Egyptian temple that he visited while in the army. He had studied this temple in school. He took us through a detailed description of the use of darkness and tight enclosure, leading into intense light and expansive space, repeating through the egress into the building. He discussed the building of tension and awe by the designers of the temple to express the omnipotence of the deity being housed in the building. He then walked us through the access line of the temple. As I watched these two young ladies drinking the story in, I thought, these two will continue to travel and visit cathedrals and other monuments and will now appreciate them in a completely different way. They will understand the use of light, the absence of it, and how buildings deliver subtle but visceral messages to those who visit them, and all because an evening of stories. May we continue the tradition of his discussions for many years to come, and as he would say frequently throughout a meal, cheers to that. <laughs> This is a message from Senator Ann Cools. I met Roderick Robbie in Toronto in 1977, 35 years ago. He came to me as a supporter in my nomination bid for the Liberal candidacy, candidacy in the federal riding of Rosedale. He was drawn to my candidacy, candidacy, I'm losing it, because of his belief in the capacity of human beings to participate in the business of ordering their community and their governments. He believed that politics was the business of the people and that politics should engage the finest in instincts of human beings to control the forces that govern them. In April 1978, he seconded my nomination, moved by Cam Margaret Campbell MPP at the Liberal nomination meeting at the Sheridan Centre. This contest of only two candidates was the largest ever held to that date. It was groundbreaking and thereafter made nomination selections very public events. To the delight of many, and after, only after the votes had been counted, Prime Minister Pierre Elliott Trudeau paid that meeting a surprise visit. Rod Robbie's love of humanity and his concern for people were great, as was his capacity to share with him. I will always treasure his and Enid's support for me in that very rigorous political contest. I shall always be grateful to them for their devoted and unstinting support in those times. Our dear friend Rod was an accomplished architect. He was a devoted husband, a loving father, and a good friend. His was a life of service. In memory of our dear friends, I will, dear friend, I will come, quote Mahatma Gandhi about service and serving. He said, the path of service can hardly be trodden by one who is not prepared to renounce self-interest, to recognize the conditions of his birth. Consciously or unconsciously, every one of us does render some service or other. If we cultivate the habit of doing this service deliberately, our desire for service will steadily grow stronger and will, excuse me, and will make not only our own happiness, but that of the world at large. Rod was a distinguished Canadian 
and a truly great man. We are all blessed to have known him. Now let us uphold him. I would now like, thank you. I would now like to introduce my brother, my baby brother, Angus Robbie. <laughs> 